welcome to the first match of set two of the games from August 20th. Upper right hand corner, we have Eagle Burger, which is Machines, AKA, bottom, and he's starting as the White Zerg, bottom left hand corner. We have Raz, starting as the Purple Protoss. I believe this is on Good Night. It is on Good Night, from memory. And for what, this is gonna be a fun one, because for whatever reason, so these two guys have practiced against each other quite a bit. They know each other's style, and for whatever reason, they bring out the best in one another in these heads-up matches. The, I, the last match, actually, if you want to see a really fun one, that, although it was a little bit, it was a more interesting match, I'll put it that way. It was definitely favored towards one player. I won't spoil which one, but it was an interesting matchup. And kind of a throwback matchup, actually. So I'm giving spoilers now, but check out Rogue's Gallery match between these two guys, between Raz and Machine. Between the two... Machine, I think, has been in better form as of late. He has been practicing quite a bit. He actually made it into the second to top. So when you look at BSL, they've got like the Pro League, and then below Pro League, they have Gosu League. Machine made it into Gosu League last season, so he's back closer to top form. Raz has really been improving his play overall over the last year, and I think he's one of those guys, especially because he's kind of in the same practice cadre, he can really give Machine a run for his money. Simulator canceled to get an extra drone. Looks like we are seeing a pool first build. Nine pool, which is already a little bit unusual for machine. Oftentimes machine on four player maps opts for more macro play. Looks like we are seeing a gateway opener for Raz thus far, which against the early Zerglings sometimes can... We'll have to see. Sometimes it can come down to macro, uh, micromanagement, but you really need to make your results effective. Probe scouting the bottom right-hand corner with minerals in hand, bearing gifts, it looks like. Maybe a tribute. Drone making its way to the bottom right-hand corner for Machine. He is building the initial nine... Sorry, initial nine? Initial 12 Zerglings. Initial six Zerglings. Let me do my math properly. I was doing so well in commentary up to this stage. Doing the initial six Zerglings. That's uh, three times two. That's math. Seeing him like... Ah, Chatcraft has been throwing me off. Moltrap's Chatcraft. I like Machine actually. What is this? So he's get, getting that natural expansion as the Zerglings are popping out. And the probe sneaking by, it looks like it's gonna see that natural expansion in development and moving back in. The Zerglings starting to spread their way across. That drone is gonna find the front. Raz, knowing he needs to blockade here. And this is kind of the tricky situation when you go gateway first, is yeah, you gotta keep these Zealots. And that's actually why I like seeing the Zergling first opening sometimes. So the drone gonna go ahead and back off. It gives a large degree of map control and the Zealots really need to, basically you need to pocket them in and blockade. It looks like Raz playing a little bit risky. So the Zealot pulling off the front. Here's the thing. Machine can run up. He can attack that gateway. But these Zealots need to make sure they are maintaining kind of this front door cohesion and staying spread out and blocking with the probes. But you can see this dance that happens and it can be very frustrating and very stressful on the Protoss player. Raz playing very bravely and actually skipping a forge altogether on his front door. Because usually you see a forge to... So there's the forge. But he went Nexus before this forge. A cannon... Just one cannon behind the line will stop these shenanigans, but in the interim, you have to expend a lot of focus and energy on the front. The one advantage of this, though, is you do get a larger number of zealots out, additional zerglings, joining the front for machine. Looks like he's going to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock base. He does have that gas up, that natural expansion running. We'll see where he continues uh, this from here. So what can happen as far as a turnaround is once you have that cannon established, you do have a little bit of an earlier threat that you can pose with these zealots in sufficient numbers, which sometimes can force more Zerglings. Raz now having the Zealot to Zergling advantage. Usually it's about three Zerglings to... So with some amazing... Mi so once you have... It's weird, because I feel like the numbers change as things go on when it's just single Zealot versus single Zergling battle. It's like you want... You can... With some nice micro, three Zerglings can take down a Zealot. But once you're starting to talk, talk about, like, larger groupings where you really can't micro every single Zealot perfectly, you really do want that, like, four-to-one ratio, I think is what it comes down to. I'd like to hear uh, some professional Zerg player, or some much better Zerg players comment on that, as far as the difference between kind of like small grouping versus large grouping micro. But the big thing between both is having a decent amount of concavity. Probe Scout managed to sneak through. There is a single Zergling on the hunt. They're not speed upgraded though. Looks like we do see, looks like six drones here. No saturation yet at the 12 o'clock location, but the layer on the way. This is thus far looking like it is going to be three hatch. Uh, and it looks like, did that? Miss whether that, yeah, it looks like that Zergling did get the kill to keep Raz in the dark. He's warping in a photon cannon here, does have that cybernetics core up, does need to get a Stargate to go ahead and see what Machine's up to. Machine's done a fantastic job of keeping me in the dark. 
The Zealot's moving forward, able to get that Zergling kill, and you can see right here, actually able to get all of that damage, and he didn't even lose any shield. So you can go ahead and walk away, maybe even shuffle the low shield Zealot to the back, and just get more favorable trades. So big win there for Raz. He's starting to march out. He might be able to get some harassment on the 12 o'clock location. This is kind of that follow-up I was talking about. The Zergling sneaking by, trying to cut off some reinforcements, while Raz is potentially distracted. Able to get some done, and this is actually forcing more Zerglings to be built. Speed is upgrading here. And also, looks like that Stargate's on the way. And what is nice about this timing as well is, is if you can do it just right, you can continue to force a lot of the Zerglings to be produced and keep that Larva low and buy yourself some time against Mulusk uh, and things like that. And also, it keeps that drone count a little bit lower because obviously you're building Zerglings instead of drones in that between time. The thing, though, is, is if you end up losing all your Zealots and you don't have your... Basically, if you lose all your results, you don't get anything accomplished, and he just wipes you out. Then you've lost map control, and you're kind of back into like the similar just versus striker situation where the Zerg can do whatever he wants on the map, uh, comparatively. I'm going to go ahead and drop this so we can see the better portion of this battle. Nice concavity thus far. Looks like Machine just has a huge amount of Zerglings hunting down this Zealot Force. He's looking... It uh, looks like Raz is trying to find a better position to engage. Ends up losing two Zealots for free, now engaging on the ramp. That's allowing him to engage a few Zerglings at a time. So he's going to get a, a large amount of kills as a result. Does have that Corsair moving out in between. The Spire is up. Looks like there should... I'm looking for the Scourge. Did I miss the Scourge already out on the field? No Scourge. Actually, no anti-air yet. So it is possible. So there's the first Scourge. So it is possible that an Overlord might get taken out here. Raz does want to kind of babysit there. There's This, this is the Scourge being produced here. And this is kind of the mark of good Protoss in these moments is, does the Scourge get him? And does he get the Overlord in the interim? I think this Overlord is going to survive. So Raz, seeing the popping Scourge, is going to go ahead and back off. And it looks like there are additional Mulusks being produced, but Machine is slotting back. Actually, let's see if he's going to go for... Okay, no, he's grabbed an additional hatchery. He, so he's gone up to kind of five... Well, what is this? So four, five... Yeah, five hatch Hydra-ish. Well, he's gone to five hatch Muta to follow this up, interestingly enough. So... He can't produce, with the amount of gas he has, you can't produce that many Mutalisks is what it comes down to. But I'm wondering if he's just going to go for a Mutalisk Flood at some point. There are three Corsairs and a Cannon at the front. And this is a very similar style of play that he showed in the Rogue's Gallery match. And I'm wondering if Raz is going to fall for it this time. So you've got level one weapons upgrading. I think he's anticipating this. This is a very old style where basically, yeah, you just get a huge amount of Mutalisks and you try to establish dominant air control and build up more and more Mutalisks until you're just overwhelming your enemy. There is a Hydralisk Den being plopped down behind this and a Creep Colony, so it is possible to transition back out of this. And I think the decision for it, so the Scourge currently trying to box out and keep these Mutalisks alive, some Zerglings testing that front door. There's plenty of cannons right there. This is a very boxed-in front, though, from Raz, and this might create some problems as far as his follow-up. But... The thing is, is if you see your opponent, and, and kind of the trick of it is, is if you see your opponent, this is the flexibility of Zerg. You can go in with those Mutalisks. If you see your opponent going a lot of Corsair and going weapons when you can transition back to Hydralisks. He has, actually, one critical thing in this build, though, is Machine has not grabbed his third gas yet. Which I'm wondering if that's going to make him less larva efficient. You can see all of the kind of these larva that can't be utilized uh, kind of in this with this amount of... Uh, so he's got a lot of flexibility, but I'm wondering how how much he can really capitalize on everything. But So it looks like initially got a lot of Mutalists. I think he wants to transition to, I guess, Muta Hydra in the mid-game to be able to pick off those High Templar in kind. Kind of going halfway. It looks like Raz, yeah, getting down that pylon because he does want to follow this up by going ahead and grabbing his third machine. This is kind of his opportunity to go ahead and grab an additional base while there's a bit of a lull in the action. Dark Templar moving out, getting a couple kills. Phenomenized Carapace is on the way, but there's no detection. And I actually love Dark Templar at this stage of the match to basically provide some latent detection to keep an eye on where those Mulesks are and what numbers they are to kind of get a good idea of how many Corsairs you can be uh, that you, you can be producing. This is effectively because keep in mind there's a control group of... Uh, there, there's an overlord with this control group of Mulesks and these Scourge behind. So this is effectively a full control group of Mulesks wandering in. I think this... There are a lot of Corsair in the background. I think they have level 1 weapons upgrade. So let's see how these mules... But they are able to pick off one, two High Templar, which is huge. So they made that really worthwhile. But they're getting obliterated in the meantime. You can just see the huge amounts of damage those Mutalisks took 
on exit, those Corsairs are really choosing, chewing through their health. That's the level one weapons upgrade and splash with just five. And once you have six out, you can kind of feel comfortable that you have sufficient air dominance. So Machine, able to pick off some High Templar, but at the same time, he's not grabbing, he does have that third gas established. I'm wondering if he's gonna push more to Hive Tech. It looks like he is grabbing that additional base now. Just was missing it. I was wondering if he's gonna grab an additional gas base. He's playing a little bit more uh, defensive in posture, which I think is intelligent at this stage. Raz is grouping up with his own troops. And I think Raz wants to think about establishing his own base as well. To go ahead and grab, yeah, his mineral only, maybe six o'clock, maybe some additional gas. Machine going up, trying to do some disruption. There are some Dragoons underneath. And with enough Corsair, as long as you have positioning, you can, yeah, turn around, wipe out those Scourges. Mutilus is moving up. Want to pick off those High Templar once again, but I think this is going to cause all of these Mutilus to get wiped off the map. And that is, in fact, the case. And that was for one High Templar. I do not think that was a great exchange. So a little bit less Psy Storm, but honestly, I feel like Raz should still feel comfortable enough to go ahead and grab something with the troop count he has. He's starting to move around. Those Hydalists might want to stay back. Because these Corsair, yeah, can hunt these Overlords. The Overlords do have speed. They're starting to move up. It looks like Raz, actually, with a small enough attack force and not enough Psy Storm where he feels comfortable kind of pushing in. So Machine doing a good job of delaying Raz's economy. He's got uh, 43 workers, which is about where he wants to be at this stage of the match. He's a little bit behind in supply, but again, he has that nice flexibility. The Corsair is moving up, trying to get Overlord kills where they can. One of the Corsairs being picked off. And this is... This is kind of what Raz has to work with at this stage to kind of slow Machine's economy down. Nice pickoff of Overlords. This is exactly what he needs to do. Kind of babysit. Ooh, babysit these Corsair. Lost another one. Babysit these Corsair. Grab the Overlords. Take them out where he can. Force Machine to be in a more defensive posture while he's establishing uh, additional expansions. No probe there. Yet to grab it. Usually you want to do this while that Nexus is warping in. I like the Zergling on patrol as well at the 9 o'clock while that's happening. Now that Machine feels like the Corsair count's been picked off a little bit. Moving forward with these Hydalisks. They are level 1 weapon Hydralisks. I think there's enough Psy Storm where this might be a decent engagement for Raz. He has the probe in position now. However, Machine has a strike force nearby. With a decent amount of micromanagement, he might be able to deny this base. Corsair are hunting for the Overlords in the meantime across there, but here's that engagement. Psy Storm on the retreat path. Nice Psy Storm from Raz. That was a really patient Psy Storm in his part. I think that is going to force Machine back. He doesn't have sufficient forces to really punch through that. The Corsair... Still trying to find additional attack force. It looks like two additional Corsair got picked off in the interim. I'm not sure if that was due to some Scourge or maybe some Hydralisks. And now that the, this is what I love with this sort of build order, though, you can see now that those Corsair have been wiped out, there's a really fast tech switch from Machine back to Mutalisk. He's like, okay, you expended your Corsair. You didn't babysit them well. Guess what I'm going to do? <clears throat> I'm going to switch up tech. I'm going to make those High Templar pay. Or I'll make uh, maybe your main, which only has two cannons protecting. Maybe your natural expansion, which only has one cannon protecting that probe line. Uh, make it pay. Zergling going up, just scouting, sacrificing its life for the swarm to see what's going on. Six o'clock base starting to warp in. It looks like Machine's going to go ahead and take his three o'clock as well. So look for these Mutalisks to do something crazy. Lurker tech has finished, and a couple lurkers might be established across the field. So Machine has a good amount of established tech. Is going to be behind, I think, in the upgrade battle. Yeah, level one weapons. But you can see, yeah, the Mutalisks swarming in very easily. The, the, the Dragoons just do not kill them in time. Forcing... Oh, nice Psy Storm, though, which might save that third High Templar's life. But two High Templar were, were picked off in that grouping. The Dragoons just don't kill them fast enough to protect the High Templar. Still, I think, a decent exchange with that a uh, kind of suicide death knell psi storm overhead to wipe those units out. Machine starting to move out to the 9 o'clock location. Just tap that. Let's see if he gets this established. Does have a... Looks like that single mules backing out. The Hydalus now grouping up with fewer psi storms. Lurkers planting. Observers too far forward. They're getting picked off immediately, and that's going to force Raz to go ahead and back off. As far as the follow-up, does get a nice psi storm to pick off a couple additional lurkers. Some Hydalus look like they were... Trying to go for a flank attack, but keep in mind this is only level 1 weapons versus... Well, I guess level 1 weapons versus level 1 armor. I expect level 2 weapons to be here for some reason. Uh, so Raz going to have to back off. Another High Templar getting picked off. Machine doing a great job of picking these units off kind of midfield. And more Lurkers starting to push in and push Raz into more of a defensive posture. Some nice ice from blanketing right there. But the Lurkers have managed to establish the low ground. There's no Observers overhead, so Raz is going to have to be content to go ahead and sit back with a potential Zerg threat on that corner. What's this Zealot doing? It's like, I'm going to go ahead and just... Ah, I managed to get a kill. Go figure. 
Observer's rejoined. There's a lot of Dragoons to go ahead and clear this Lurker field. So a bit of a, a fight in the middle. Raz actually has a 20 supply lead. Which I think gives him a slight advantage. It looks like that probe's going to be pushed out. This is essentially three base Protoss versus four base Zerg. The main's looking... Well, actually, the main's actually really well saturated. Or sorry, it still has a... Not saturated. It's got a lot of minerals left for machine. Wondering if I just... Did I miss a Dark Templar moving up there or something like that? I'm wondering what happened here where there's just not as many units in that location. Machine moving up towards Hive Tech at this stage, grabbing another hatchery. Uh, kind of a odd spread of units overall. Starting to get a little bit more defensive and shell up. Raz, with map control, realizing he has map control. Because comparatively, look at this. So Ra this is usually what you'll see. So Raz's main about empty, but this is basically yeah, three base versus... I take it back, a basically five base Zerg. So Machine with uh, economically, but behind overall in supply. I think he's still behind in the overall upgrade battle as well. <clears throat> Slightly. But he does have that unit flexibility. And he also has, it looks like, a degree of mobility. Raz, I think, wants to pick a fight here. In kind of an advantageous situation, having trouble finding a location to do so. Whiffing a bit of a side storm right there, being a little bit impatient with it. The thing is, that's the trouble with side storms. Ooh, great side storm right there. Is you have to be. It's difficult because you don't want your high. Temp you don't want a high templar to sit there and not expend its side storm, right? You don't want to have that happen. Looks like a single zergling pecking away at this nine o'clock base. Raz should easily be able to walk in and wipe out that poor. Just, just dedicate a zergling or a zealot to go ahead. Yeah, there's that. This is going to be the hero's zealot. level two weapons, level two armor online, by the way. So that zergling didn't even have a chance. But with this entire army out of position, Zerglings are starting to flood down towards the 6. I don't see... Adrenal Upgrades is on the way. I don't see any uh, Dark Swarm, Defilers, anything else, though, in this composition to really make this a huge threat. Might be able to wipe out the base before there's a response, but that army should get wiped out as well. Some cannons in defense situation. A High Templar does get picked off. It does manage to drop its Side Storm. And a big army flooding into the 6 o'clock base. It looks like Raz is going to opt to engage and pin this army in and kind of wipe it out from the six. Maybe because it, there's, I mean, this mineral only is also nearby. A little bit slow to respond. Some side storms, and he's having to fight uphill into these lurkers. I like Machine's placement of those lurkers behind to kind of like cover the trail, allow these reinforcements to go ahead and sneak in. Adrenal upgrade is not quite finished yet, so I don't think he's going to get this Nexus, though. Doing a good, Raz doing a good job protecting the observers this time, being really patient with this. However, maybe a little bit too patient. Some Hydralisks continue to press into this. He's just sacking that base. He's like, whatever. I don't care. I'm going to lose that. I might lose my mineral only, but I'm going to go ahead and wipe out some bases of Machine while his army is completely out of position. Starting to move up now. The Dragoons leading. And there's a lot of Zerglings to absorb them, but they're engaged with the Zealots, so they're getting picked off. So it looks like it's going to be some Lurkers morphing in right and some Psystorm actually clearing out a lot of those units ahead. And the Lurker's not even burrowed as they're dying in this forward field. So Raz with a nice positional switch up. The 6 o'clock base was wiped out, but it looks like that army repositioned and has been cleared out otherwise. And Raz is at least going to be able to take out this mineral only and might even be able to get some bonus on top of everything else. Drones fleeing. He's also managed to establish that uh, 9 o'clock base. He, so he basically he sacked the 6 o'clock, lost his mineral only, Cleared out everything with reinforcements, but he's going to go ahead and start working on machine spaces to kind of counter this. Machine still has an army in position. He's trying to go for a contain, so basically it's kind of like, okay, I'll contain you while you're wiping everything else out, and I'll just rebuild behind this. Two High Templars sneak behind the lines. It doesn't look like I have Psy Storm to quickly obliterate the drone lines, but the Dragoons and Zealots are getting into this otherwise. An Observer was picked off. The drone's now trying to flee and make it out of dodge to go ahead and mine and stay as part of that front. Some side storm picking off that containment force from Machine on the front door. Reinforcements of Zerglings trying to go ahead and get up on top of these Dragoons with that Adrenal Upgrade. They can peel through those Dragoons pretty rapidly, but that's not before these 12 o'clock base, not before this 12 o'clock base is gonna lose all of its hatcheries, basically forcing Machine back down to, to three bases. So it's gonna be again three bases versus two, with still a standing army of Raz being a big threat. Two High Templar to maybe fight off some Zerglings, some Lurkers, and some Hydralis. This is a formidable attack force. Moving into the 9 o'clock right here. This might be the key moment here. Blanketing Psy Storm as these units are pushing in. Great Psy Storms. Lurkers are there. It looks like this is going to get cleaned up very easily. Raz still has a standing army to go ahead and push out and get something accomplished here. 
The Lurker, however, manages to get behind that line. And there's no Observer nearby. So at least able to disrupt some... Some economy here at the 9 o'clock base. A handful of probes getting wiped out. Raz actually backing off, going ahead and clearing his front door. I think Machine might be in trouble. He's at half the supply of Raz after all of those exchanges. His economy has been somewhat shattered. He is... He's not very well saturated in his main. He, his natural expansion, decently saturated. His third base is just now starting to get saturated. But Raz, momentarily, is going to be able to go ahead and clear this out. He's going to be at two bases, and he has enough of a standing army that he can go ahead and attack Machine, get additional uh, bases established. And I think the big story here might be just the sheer upgrade advantage that Raz has at this stage of the match. He's going to go ahead and plop a bunch of cannons, not just to establish a base, but also deny additional bases to Machine. Trying to find an attack unit somewhere to be basically look at the upgrades. This is level 1 carapace, level 2 spines versus basically, yeah, level 3 weapons, level 2 armor. Momentarily fully upgraded Protoss army, which is scary. So Raz with a huge advantage at this stage of the match. Machine needs to survive if he's going to stay in this match. Overlord's going to see that expansion going up in the upper left. Maybe Defiler might be able to... Here's the thing, if you're playing lower upgrades... Sometimes you can get away with that with Adrenal Upgrades and Dark Swarm, but I did not see any Dark Swarm anywhere overhead in, at any part of any of these exchanges, which meant those were exposed Zerglings where the Dragoons could, you know, flail, do the damage, etc., etc. You guys get what I'm saying. Army starting to group up. Machine in a very defensive pot, well, just a skeleton crew. I don't think he has enough to defend this. Raz could just honestly walk straight through this. It looks like he's going to opt not to. He has plenty of Psystorm, though, to attack the high ground. Machine trying to retake that 12 o'clock. He has two Lurkers in a defensive posture, but Raz cycling around, looking for potentially a kill blow. He doesn't really need to press this too much. Great Psystorms on the high ground. He can just go for potentially just take this high ground, take the contain, more Psystorm, and just establish all of the bases effectively. And I think this is too much. I do not believe Machine has enough to defend this. Nice engagement there by Raz. Has twice the supply. Is starting to walk into that natural expansion. Some, the rest of the reinforcements that are trying to defend that 3 o'clock base are now cycling forward to try to defend the natural expansion. They are going to be greeted by a lot of Dragoons. And maybe a bad engagement from Raz here being a little bit overcommitted to pushing to this natural expansion and going running into a SimCity, some Sun Colonies. Maybe that will be saver from Machine, but I don't know. This looks like too much. Dragoons continuing to press against this. They're are attacks from multiple angles. The Observer is having trouble finding Lurkers on both sides. And the Dragoons, yeah, just kind of pinned in a little bit. Looks like they are going to be able to clear, open things up a little bit. Hydalus, enough Hydalus, and actually this is hold position. Dragoons looks like they weren't attacking it for a second. Yeah, still not attacking. They're not range upgraded? I think they're not range upgraded and they're on hold position. Now getting range <laughs> for the Dragoons. I think Raz realized at the same moment I did. Nevertheless, I think Raz has enough where this is going to be GG. He's got that op that front opened up. <laughs> Left hand base is starting to produce for him. He can take that natural expansion basically at well. The nine o'clock base is producing for him. Natural expansion a little bit thin. He's gonna go. He's got that six o'clock up. So machine though making a game of it. He's gone ahead and killed a couple of observers. Push things out. He's got that 3 o'clock base saturated. The natural expansion is basically empty. His main still somehow has minerals. I don't know what happened there. But that 12 o'clock base is back up. And he still has a lot of tech. He is hive tech. So if he could get a defiler mount down, get his upgrades somehow back up, reestablish economy, maybe he can get something accomplished. He's being aggressive with this. He, really, he realizes he needs to slow Raz's economy down. Unfortunately, losing, finding nothing, losing a lot of troops there. Raz with another army starting to move out. Raz a little bit light on minerals at this stage until he gets some of the saturation going. It looks like he did manage finally to saturate that upper left-hand corner. These are the matches between these two guys. They really turn into just like slugfests. Really fun matches in my opinion. So three Archons. Keep in mind these Archons will just melt. Fully upgraded Archons melt Zerglings. Some Dragoons fully upgraded that can melt pretty much anything else in that Protoss army. And I think, yeah, a handful of High Templar. So this is a really beefy, this is the heavyweight late game Protoss army that you want. Starting to maraud around the map, make sure Machine doesn't have any expansions and also establish expansions for himself. Machine taking this time to go ahead and resaturate various locations. Still well behind in his overall upgrade path. 
just trying to get a lot of lurkers, and I think what he's going to try to rely on as a game plan at this stage is have Hive Lusks, pick off the Observers, and then just let lurkers do their work underneath. I don't know how effective that's going to be with a lot of the Psystorm and just the sheer supply difference, however, between Machine and Raz at this stage of things. I do like that Raz is playing a little bit more passively at this stage. I think he knows he's well ahead in the overall economic... Uh, what do I want to say? Economic war? The Cold War. The Brood War. He's going to go ahead and grab this Nexus. Starting to move up to this 12 o'clock base. Once again, there are a handful of workers there. He doesn't need to press anything, really. He can go ahead and keep wiping out this mineral only, starve machine out that way, or just wait until he's maxed at 200 and play the game from there. Does have a lot of gateways here in the background, going ahead and pumping units. And he's just kind of, yeah, marauding across the middle of the map. Looks like, oh, sorry, did I miss a shuttle? I missed a shuttle. I missed a lot of kills here, is what I missed. Let me do a quick... Uh, do I want to do a rewind? I don't think I need to do rewind. You guys know what happened there. Overlord's starting to sneak out. So three kills, and actually just going to drop him back off and remorph. So I think that was about ten kills there at the three o'clock. Sorry, I missed that drop. You guys will forgive me, though. Uh, Scourge, trying to hunt down that shuttle. It's empty, so a nice Scourge bait at the, at the very least. Raz pocketing... Some more High Templar to maybe go for another shuttle drop somewhere around here. And Machine's just really in trouble. He's just now breaking the 100 supply mark. Raz is not that far off 200 200. This is, again, just a scary army. Raz has more than half the base, or more than half the map in bases at this stage, plus map control, plus the upgrade advantage. Probe wandering up just to see what it's seeing. Machine's just, and it looks like he's going to try to use maybe Scourge. I don't know. Scourge to pick off units up in the air. He does have Defilers out. He does have Consume upgrading. That might be a difference. He's also upgrading Ventral Sacks. So it's possible maybe with a crazy ninja drop, and I missed another drop. Man. Was on it, and then all of a sudden off of it again. So another grouping of, uh, as I'm like, a regrouping. Raz, I think part of the problem is, is I just don't feel like Raz even needs to drop at this stage. I think he can just continue to macro up, but he's you know doing what he can. But point being, another big drop there at the 12 o'clock location, just emptying the drones there. What we were at, like 40, so I think that was another 10 drone kills in the midst of this. So continuing to keep Machine's economy light, storming some of these lurkers over the high ground. And honestly, this feels just kind of like a cleanup situation, where eventually Raz will hit max, and it looks like that this is the moment, and just start pushing. It looks like some battle drones or some drones just wanting to see the front. They're like, before I die, before we give up the war, I, w I just want to see what war looks like on the front line instead of just moving back and forth across the minerals in the front. Single Hydralist, seeing stuff. Looks like a robotics facility maybe for, now that Swarm's out here, to get some Reavers out here. Lurkers with some Swarm pressing this up, but the Archons are there, and you can just see between Archons and Psystorm with detection, they really can melt these Lurkers pretty rapidly. I would not be shocked to see a GG once this army's wiped up. Because Machine, again, at half the supply. Can you pick off the Observers? That's another trick of this. No, it doesn't look like the Observers are in a pick-offable situation. Now the Dragoon's actually walking into the Swarm and using it to their advantage a little bit. <clears throat> Enough Zealots again with that upgrade advantage pushing through this. A good Psy Storm on that corner, and it looks like, yeah, there's GG. To be honest, the game was over a while ago. I'm wondering if it, I don't think I'll bother rewinding getting the Psy Storm drops. They're mostly superfluous. It's like it wasn't needed. <laughs> it was kind of like the, the coffin was already nailed. It was like, okay, now we're going to grab a couple, like, anvils and just drop two of them on top of the coffin on top of everything else with these storm drops. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will do uh, one more for the live stream. Uh, really fun match. Check out these guys in their Rogue Gallery play, and again, check out their streams, Raz, BW, on Twitch, and Machine USA. Special shout out to both these guys. They're some of my favorite players. Thanks for listening.